So in that Back to Basics playlist that I did, I showed you a pour of Am I Bright using some very bright fluorescent neon pigments from Mad Micas. And I was reminded that I had promised to talk specifically about fluorescence and neons in a video because I didn't quite do enough of it in the last time we talked about colorants. And uh, so that's what we're doing today. But I'll tell you more about it in just a minute. There's not much else to say, but I have to send you to the intro because it's my thing. So hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 336 of 365 days of soap. And today, as I said, we're talking about fluorescence and neons in soap and cosmetics and how to use them and why we shouldn't use them, where we can use them, what the controversy is, all the things while making Am I Bright again, because it's a fun soap. It's bright. It's in the name. Actually, it's a question in the name, isn't it? It's, am I bright? I thought it was clever. So anyway, let's get to the video and we can do all of those things. Okay, talking about neons and fluorescence and glow in the dark for funsies today. So let's do that thing. I mean, first up, just for ease, neon and fluorescence are interchangeable terms in the colorant world, in the artist world, in the world world, really. And really what they mean at the very base is really, really bright lights. That's what that means. And it goes back to this whole thing back in like the late 1700s when super smart scientists were doing super smart scientist things and there was like a little bit of stuff left over in a, in a tube and they were like, well, which is this? Is it argon? Which noble gas is it? All the things anyway they continued on with all of their you know research and studies and everything and it wasn't until a very long time later like 1910 where it was successfully decided and created neon officially is termed and made its way into the world and it is now a a, a really bright thing that you can make like you know neon signs and stuff out of and that started happening in the early 1900s around here. And then it was after that that, you know, of course, like paint colorants and all of the things also became a thing. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about colorants. So that's important to keep in mind. While we call these colorants neons and or fluorescents, they're not necessarily ever made out of neon. In fact, I don't think they ever are. But they're made out of other pieces of cool stuff that actually makes, you know, the super bright colors, lights. Yeah. So as we talked about before, when we were talking about all the different colorants and whatnot, there are certain things that are either exempt from getting certified like micas or chrome green or titanium dioxide, iron oxide, ultramarines. And there are other things that are completely approved by the FDA. All of those things plus, you know, lakes and dyes that get batch certified if standing on their own. Neons and fluorescents are not those things that are approved by the FDA for cosmetic use. So you may be asking, well, then why are you using it in your soap? Well, because soap is exempt from cosmetic industry standards to a point, to, to a point, 
I mean, still a good idea to make sure that you are using good micas and whatever. We've had that conversation too many times. But anyway, point is, the, uh, the neons, the fluorescent colors, they are not approved for cosmetic use by the FDA. They are not on that list. Now, why are they not on that list? Well, realistically, the reason why they're not on that list is because they contain things that have been known to be dangerous. For example, if I were to look at this brazen hussy from Mad Micas, it includes the ingredients are polyester 3, which is a synthetic polymer and in and of itself not dangerous, and uh, red or acid red 92, which is also, you know, can be synthetic, but you know, it is dangerous. It is a fluorescein dye that is known to be an irritant and a health hazard. And so the FDA can't just say, oh yeah, sure, go ahead and put that next to your eyes or in your lip products. No, they, they, they're not going to do that. And so therefore they haven't done it. And so that's why fluorescence and neons, same thing, have not been approved by the FDA for cosmetic use because it gets too close to the very sensitive areas in your on your skin, in your body, and it can be dangerous. So there's that. So now how about neons? Neons are, well, they glow in the dark. They are phosphors that after, you know, a long enough time hanging out in UV exposure, they emit a light. That's pretty cool. And to this day, there's actually only one, to my knowledge, glow in the dark pigment that is approved for the, by the FDA for cosmetic use, and that is zinc sulfide. But you can get glow in the dark from all manner of places, right? You can get it from uh, calcium sulfide is another option. Hundreds of thousands of synthetic phosphors have been created over the years and they can be volatile. Some of them are created from radium salts, which is radioactive. They can be volatile and oxidized. They can cause irritation, death, etc. And so the FDA specifically just has this one that is approved for cosmetics and hasn't messed with the rest of them. So net net, we can use neons, fluorescence, glow-in-the-dark stuff in our soaps, but in our cosmetics, just one type of glow-in-the-dark, which again is going to be the zinc sulfide, which, you know, this is why I love Mad Mica. They have all that information there, even handy cheat sheets as to whether or not it can be used. The rest of that you cannot use. The fluorescence, the neons, so your brazen hussy, your grape ape, all the things, not for cosmetic use. And bath bombs, are cosmetic. Now, you've seen so many cool color palettes out there from, you know, Manny MUA and all of your favorite YouTube makeup people, right? Super bright colors. And if you bothered looking at the ingredients list, you would see that they contain colorants that don't look like iron oxide or ultramarines. They're more like polyester 3, acid red 92. How do they get around that? Well, you would also see if you looked at the thing itself, that they label these things color palettes, not eye palettes. So it's a tricky little way of labeling, really, to get around this, but that doesn't mean that they're right in doing it. Now remember, no cosmetics need to be pre-approved or certified by the FDA in their totality. Just the colorants, right? That's it. That's all they mess with. That does not mean, though, that at some point, if you are using the wrong colorants in your cosmetic pro products that they won't come inspect and or shut you down for having done so. In fact, they seize all kinds of things at the ports in the U.S. coming in from other countries, makeup related things, cosmetic related things, all of the time because they are using colorants and other things that are not allowed in our products, mostly because they contain things like you know, lead and arsenic and mercury and stuff. So definitely keep that in mind. While it may be super fun to get this really bright, awesome color in a bath bomb, let's say, it's not a good idea to be messing with any of that in your bath bombs because bath bombs are technically cosmetics by the definition that the FDA gives. Now, speaking of the FDA, I will link below four very handy articles for you to 
look at bookmark if you have any questions it gives you a nice handy dandy cheat sheet as to everything that they do have approved for cosmetic use and in what quantities also gives you a handy cheat sheet for everything that is exempt and why it is exempt really the biggest reason why it's exempt is because it doesn't contain anything that is considered to be a public health risk so yeah definitely check it out and also check out you know the fda stance on neons and fluorescence and remember that just because it's not you know approved right now doesn't mean it's not going to be approved later but just think about all the potential parts that could go into a particular colorant and what little time you know the fda has to go through all the things so cosmetics are pretty low on the list when they're dealing with foods for example but that's day 336 so yeah as far as you know should you do it or is it good or whatever yeah pros and cons just like with literally everything you do in life and in the soap making world but for a big pro i gotta say that's a pretty good pro that is bright that is beautiful that is stunning there is just everything good and awesome and happy in a soap this bright granted the majority of my line is never this bright but it is fun to add a pop of color every once in a while and go with that so yeah i'm here for that for sure as with everything else in life make your decisions as to whether you use it or whether you don't just do keep in mind that for fluorescence and neons they are not approved in cosmetics by the fda they're not specifically not approved but they're not approved they are not approved colorants. So I wouldn't put them in bath bombs or in eye makeup or in all of the things as tempting as it may be. Just keep that in mind. Yes. I hope you guys had fun today. I hope I answered the questions correctly. All the things. Never can tell. Sometimes. And yeah. Thank you for being here for today. A big thank you to my sudsers because without you I wouldn't keep doing this. And that's a fact. Because I like you. So there's that. If you're interested in Am I Bright? Yeah, you can totally pick it up on the website right now. It's currently in stock she sells out fast so go grab her at soapandclay.com if you want one right now at this exact moment they're in stock i'm out of here for today but i will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun bye